one. Hey everyone, what do you say we wrap up Bradley Cooper month with Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2? Woo! Hey guys. <coughs> Written and directed by James Gunn. So what what um character was he again? He was Rocket Raccoon. Oh yeah. Oh my god. Rocky Rocket Rocket. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I saw this movie on an airplane. Um, I saw it, and then I saw it again um, with with kid over here. So um, I'm not a kid. I'm yeah. a cat. Meow. He he kind of doesn't remember um, much of it. So. I wanted I wanted to do the review right afterwards, but by that time it was like midnight or something, and I think we both had to go to work the next day or something. So yep. Uh, uh, not, not, uh, not, not having eyes break is a little higher priority <clears throat> than a movie review. So I guess you're going to have to listen to me do most of the talking here, but jump in. She, okay. He, they had to with Burn. You're all, you're already a, uh, an, un, you're already an untapped or, or yeah, an, un, an untapped A-list actress. Oh God, please <laughs> don't. <laughs> okay, you can't be worse so, than Kristen Wiig. So here we are, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. If you like the music in the first one, oh my god, you're going to love the music here too. It just follows right in suit. I do rem uh I do one thing I do want to say, you know, jumping in was that uh Groot had several kids, right? I don't know. Or wasn't he what was the uh remember he got he got baby groots right he got burned so there's one baby group oh okay well something they kept a seedling a lot of the times uh when they add a baby character that's usually just an excuse to sell cheap plush toys and stuff <laughs> but baby Groot was pretty good in this movie yeah <laughs> He he stole the show. I really think he stole it was a the lot, show. And it was <clears throat> and it was just part of his character development. He's <laughs> age <Sage> three. <laughs> Stop it. Sorry, I have a cold of <coughs> I have a cold of uh Ice Age movies doing nothing. So anyway, let's get started. By the way, Squirrel Talk. Still waiting for your still waiting for your full review of the fifth movie. Okay. So Peter Quill um, and his fellow Guardians are hired by a um, powerful Peter alien Quill race. Peter Quill is Chris Pratt, right? Right. The Sovereign, yep. To protect their precious batteries from invaders. When it's discovered that Rocket has stole some of the batteries... I wish I could remember some of Rocket's lines because they were hilarious. Yeah. The Sovereign dispatches their armada to search for vengeance. As the Guardians try to escape the mystery of... Peter's percentage is revealed. So that's kind of a synopsis of it. So. I do I do like how at the beginning there was this action scene which which had really good music and was also pretty funny. Oh, against that huge like octopus monster? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So And um, who was Chris Pratt again? What was his character's name? Peter Quill. Wasn't one of the main storylines about him trying to find his father? Yes. He he kept thinking, who is it from Baywatch? David Hasselhoff. Yeah, he kept saying David Hasselhoff. He had a picture of him. That's what Gamora kept remembering, that um, that's who his father was. Mm -hmm. So, um, but anyway, once they start getting attacked by all of these non-man flown Drones. Drones, yeah, and they were getting attacked pretty bad just because Rocket had to steal some of their batteries. Played by Brad, or voiced by Bradley Cooper. Yep. So anyway, while they're fighting this big thing, they were trying to protect the Sovereign. So <clears throat> Baby Groot, <laughs> he is getting missed by this octopus, like, nonstop. Everybody is protecting him. <laughs> Baby Groot, as he's sitting there going around and around with the music and everything, and mm -hmm. they're fighting the octopus, and yeah. So that's how they save the Sovereign from this huge monster. So anyway, um, 
out of the blue, the Sovereign fleet is destroyed by a mysterious ship, and the Guardians crash on a planet. Soon they learn that the ship that helped them is owned by Ego. Is that what his name was? Is that one of... Isn't that... Um, can we say who the actor is? Because yeah. His dad. Oh, Kurt Russell. Yeah. I thought Stallone... Wasn't Stallone in this movie, too? Yeah. Okay. Well, Stallone was... That's who I was thinking of. Oh, sorry. Stallone was... Spoiler after... alert. Yeah. Stallone was after this guy. Okay. Okay. So... Great, great idea for an audio review. Yeah. You can't see the picture. It's on the cover. <laughs> it's the dude with the pointy head... With the... Pointy head and the the thing that flies and comes back to him. Mm -hmm. That, like, arrow or whatever it is. So, anyway... Rocket reveals that he stole some batteries, so they're fighting all these drones off. They crash into a planet. Ego's ship protects them. He doesn't show up right away, and they're all figuring out what we're going to do, what we're going to do, and everything. Um, Ego, he claims to be Peter's father. Peter is kind of like wanting to go along with it and everything, so they go with Ego to his home planet where he tells them that he is a god and all this and meaning quill is one too and his planet seems like paradise gamora is very uneasy she she knows something is going on but she doesn't know exactly what it is yet and she goes to invest invest investigate and she discovers remember those piles of bones Mm -hmm. you know um kids or whatever and it reveals that what is this guy's name again i don't know pointy head dude pointy head dude that doesn't help very much <laughs> okay we have to look up who pointy head dude is do you want me to stop sure who's and we're back yep sorry about that we had to find out who it was so Yandu is the one that is um, finding all of these children and taking them to Ego's planet. Um, he is trying to find his son because with his son, they can just take over the universe, the strength that the two would have. So... It's revealed that Yandu is at, at it. So then all of these guys, Sylvester Stallone and these other people, who is that one among the Ravagers? Taserface? <laughs> Where Rocket kept making jokes about it. Oh, oh yeah. Taserface. Oh, you know? I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, you're so scary. You know, so mm -hmm. Yandu and um, Rocket, and they they get little Groot drunk. Remember, mm -hmm. so Yandu needs his like what is it boomerang or something? This like arrow boomerang. Sure, thing. why not? It's a boomerang. And so Rocket and Yandu are trying to tell little Groot what he needs out of the one drawer. So here comes little Groot with all this different stuff. And they're like, no, 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 it's not that. So finally, after about five or six items that little Groot brings, he finally does bring his um, boomerang type thing. So, mm -hmm. and in the meanwhile, you know, that is going on. And Peter is still in shock, finally meeting his father. And then he, his father tells the story about how he fell in love with his with his mom, but then, then he learns that ego kind of gave his mom the brain tumor, and that kind of turned a lot of things. So they had to get out of there. So they had to destroy the planet um, that he was on. And Drax wants to do it, but then Yondo, he's the one that wants to do it. So, um, 
after they finally get there, um, trying to remember. I know that Peter's trying to woo Gamora. Then he finds out about his father giving his mom the brain tumor and stuff like that. And and that just kind of throws him into <clears throat> a tizzy. And then um, he has to prove himself. So um, they all meet up. Drax is getting to know Mantis, and he keeps making fun of Mantis. She's got two little thingies on her head, antennas or whatever. Yeah. And she is trying to help the Guardians by putting Ego to sleep because he doesn't sleep very well. Mm -hmm. So she helps to put him asleep. And then um, they all are trying to blow up this planet. And they need little Groot to go in there and place this bomb because little Groot is only the smallest one. And they keep trying to tell little Groot, don't press this button, press this button. And little Groot's like, that button? You know, he, he kept saying Groot, Groot. Or isn't that what he kept saying, Groot? Yeah. No, not that button, this button or whatever. So anyway. But, um... Rocket gives his last space suit to Yandu because when he was in that prison, you know, by the Ravagers, he got to know Yandu. But then Yandu um, gave what he, he flies by. Peter is just flying out in the planet's atmosphere. Yandu puts the suit on Peter to save him. He tells Peter that while Ego was his father, he was never his daddy. Yandu then starts to freeze up in space, and Peter sadly watches him die. The Guardians prepare um, Yandu for a um, funeral at in space. Yeah. Kraglin is really, really upset. Um, Yandu was like a mentor to him. Wasn't he like a father? I think so. Yeah. But, um... So, as they, they, um, let Yandu fly out the ship, then all of a sudden all the other Ravagers come by and they're shooting off fireworks and everything. So they really gave him a super duper funeral and they were paying their respects to Yandu. So they've got Ego's planet, um, blown up. They get respect for Yandu from the other ravages and that. So now Cracklin is trying to practice using the arrow. He doesn't quite get the hang of it. He kept hitting Drake's Drax, remember? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then Drax is like, you know. And then everybody is back together and everything. And um, yeah, Aisha. She and the other sovereigns discuss their new plan to take down the guardians. She becomes now the bad person, where the guardians in the beginning saved her from that huge monster, octopus, whatever it was. But since Rocket took the batteries, now she is planning to go against the guardians. Mm -hmm. And Groot is a little more grown up. He's like a teenager. Ooh, I'm so proud of him. And Peter scolds him for leaving his roots laying around, but Groot just mocks him and plays video games. So they're all flying off, and they don't want to become bored. And um, is that the second time that Peter kisses Gamora? And then they're dancing to the music and stuff like that. So um, I thought it was pretty good. I don't know. What did you think? You didn't really remember it much, right? No. So. I already said what I remembered. I remembered some of the funny jokes and <coughs> and uh, Rocket Raccoon and that the the kid character, uh, usually that's a sign that, a sh that something is running out of steam when they have to bring in the cuteness character. 
and that wasn't that wasn't the case. Oh, and we didn't bring up Nebula and her sister. Yeah, Karen Gillan. Every time Nebula Nebula won a fight, her sister had something mechanical, and um, um, her arm removed, her hand removed, and her father would replace it mechanically. Mm -hmm. And they released her. They gave her her freedom. And she was going to find her father. And, you know, that's probably going to be a scene in the next In the movie. third one. Yeah. That she is um, going to take him down, so to speak. So, but anyway, Nebula, that was her name, right? So, would you recommend this movie to people? Yeah, if you saw the first one, even if you didn't see the first one, you could be caught up very quickly. Because it had all the characters, the team together and everything. And it had good music and had some good jokes. Yep. So we already know that he's not going to be there next time. Can you say his name instead of pointing? Well, you know. Um, Yandu. Okay. So then that means that Cracklin might take over his role a little bit more with the arrow. <laughs> That he was trying to, Rocket tried to put it back together and it, it had a little bit of problems. It didn't go straight and it didn't go where he wanted it to go. But anyway, not too bad, not too shabby. Um, I would recommend you check it out as well. I mean, even though I don't remember a whole lot about it, I did have fun watching it. Yeah, it had, it had some good parts and, you know, the music, the music was good. I'd rather watch this than... I don't know, maybe something that the other might... two movies that we watched. I was I was gonna say like Batman v Superman. Oh, okay, okay. Or so... maybe Justice League. Oh, gonna get haters. Yeah. Anyway, <coughs> I thought it was pretty good. I couldn't sleep on the plane, so that's where I saw it first. So, check it out. Well, congratulations on choosing Bradley for picking Bradley Cooper for this month for the month of January. Tune in next time where, well, it's February, huh? Yeah, yeah. Well, February. I guess we'll have to. I guess we'll have to start a trend of movies starring black actors. That might not have been the best choice. Well, anyway, and, it's Black History Month. And so. you know what actor we have to choose first, right? Ma in, ma in, ma in. Put a little R in there. I need to play you the TV show. Okay. Anyway. Bye. Bye for now, guys.